well. <laughs> this is day four or five. It's still cloudy. It's still raining every time I come outside. It stops raining for a minute. The wind dies down and I come outside to pluck a few plants in the ground. And it starts raining again. It's raining again right now. All right, well, my children are sleeping, so I'm gonna suck it up and get some plants in the ground. Okay, so I got about half the melons in. It's starting to rain a little harder. I'm probably gonna go get the rest of the melons though and make myself put them in. I've gotta do it. This poor garden is like barely planted. We still haven't gotten our onions, our corn, or our potatoes in. That's all supposed to be Paul's job though. So he'll probably do that this weekend. That's gonna be the majority of the garden. You can see we still have tons of space. Like it goes all the way back there. Um, but I still have a whole row of tomatoes to get in, a row and a half of peppers to get in, um, the rest of these melons, all of the pumpkins and zucchinis are in and started and they're all growing fantastic. But let me show you what I did with these melons which are gonna go on a trellis. So this row is a row of 12 and I do have them reasonably close together. Again, they're gonna go on a trellis and this soil is really nice. This was all a cow pasture for the last, oh my gosh, 50 to 70 years. So, um, so this soil is really nice. Um, these are Minnesota midget melons and we love these. They're so, so good. And they're the perfect size for the kids or Paul's lunchbox. So um, they also stay really small. Like these guys had a huge root system already at this size. So these can be planted close together anyway. So there's 12 right here. And then if you come over here, these are something we've never grown before. These are the table melons and they just look so good. Um, I really wanna try them. And there's 10 in this row right here. So they're spaced out, they have a little more room. These only get one to two pounds according to everything online. So I think they'll be fine on a trellis. We'll have to see. We'll put the trellis right down the middle of both rows and they'll climb the trellis. And so that will be that. The watermelons are all gonna go there. We have sugar baby watermelons and yellow petite watermelons. We are consistently getting sun during the day and rain at night, which is great for the garden. That's like actually phenomenal for the garden. Um, not so great for hay fields. Nobody's getting any hay put up. Um, and uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt because it's warm out during the day, in the middle of the day. You really don't want to be out in the garden, but you have to because you're going to get thunderstorms and pouring rain at night. So we're going to get some pumpkins planted. But first I wanted to show you guys our very makeshift chicken coop. Okay, so this is the spectacular um, for now chicken coop. This is for until this winter when uh, we will have fixed the siding on the big old barn and their uh, permanent coop is going to be in one of the big bays in there. And those bays are like huge. They're like 16 by 16. Plus they'll have an outdoor area. But this is temporary because we are not getting any eggs because we can't find them. So the girls are cooped up for a little while and then they'll be allowed to come out during the day again. But we want them to get used to being in here. There's a couple holes along the bottom. That is why she is loose. So we will have to fix that. I love these dog kennels. Whenever we find them cheap, we grab them. They're good for everything. They're good for rotational grazing for like rabbits, chickens, quail. You put stuff out on them. They're great for poultry housing. Um, if you weatherproof them, we've used this kennel a hundred different ways since we bought it. It's great. That is an extremely heavy duty tarp. It comes down really well on all three sides. Plus they have the back of the barn to block them from any wind or rain. Uh, it's, we're past cold weather, so this will be fine for the summer. And then I need to come up with more um, nesting box situations. Ooh, is somebody finally laying an egg? Oh, that's exciting. Um, nesting box situations. I was trying to give them that for nesting box, but they keep just pulling the hay out. <laughs> but there's a lot of grass and nice greenery in here, so this will keep them busy while they get used to this being where they need to be. Um, we have some roosting situations going on. I'm going to put in a few more of those today. So this is plenty doable, and they are obviously more than happy in here. Hi, girls. Hi. And once they pick a favorite laying spot in here, 
they'll be allowed out during the day again. Uh, it, I just need them to know that this is where they belong at night so that they stop pooping on my milk stand that's in the uh, shed. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? You can run through it, Ellie. You can run through the water. All right, guys, so we did some antiquing. Maine is an awesome state for antiquing. Uh, at any point in time, anywhere in Maine, you can come across an antique shop without even trying to find one. And um, if you are traveling Route 1, which is our coastal route, you come across an antique shop probably every 5 to 10 miles. So we started up a little higher and moved our way south. Next time we'll start south and go up. But we probably hit 10 or 12 um, antique shops. When we're antiquing, we're looking for things that are decorative for our style house or things that are functional, like good condition Crocs. So, But we did find a couple of new small businesses that we've never found before and we've never been to before, and that was really cool, and I'm going to tell you about them too. But as far as antique purchases, um, we did also get a few antique spoons, but those were for my grandmother, and those went to her house. She collects spoons, um, and we came across some that she doesn't have yet. So as far as antiques, what we bought for ourselves is I got two of these. Uh, these are in really good condition. They're one gallon glass jugs and they were just $4 each. So that was a really good deal. I grabbed two of them and um, I mean, I can use these for whatever I want to use them for. And then the small businesses that we found that we hadn't seen before, which were like really cool. And I was extremely excited about this one is we found a new coffee business to try and we did order some of their coffee um, to come in and try uh, in our coffee pot and so usually we use a local coffee a local organic coffee called uh, Moses Dyer and their coffee is phenomenal and I'll leave the link to shop them below because they do ship I highly recommend their coffee but we always want to try new things especially coffee so we found this company it's Green Tree Coffee and Tea of Maine and they are in Lincolnville Beach Maine so they were right along um, Route 1. And so I ordered some of their coffee in. That will be here soon. Uh, it shipped extremely quickly. I was very um, surprised and pleased with that. But while I was there, so I walk into this place. And basically, so if we come across a cafe and Paul knows that my coffee is low, he stops. I like cafe coffee. I like good coffee. So... I walk in there and I am greeted by this giant wall of just loose bulk um, herbal teas and just, I mean, crazy, crazy amounts. And uh, you weigh it up yourself and you buy it like that. You, they have two different size bags. So I got jasmine citrus and I tried this last night and it was absolutely delicious. And then I got a wellness blend. And I wish I would have wrote down what was on that, but I'll leave, um, these guys ship too, so I'll leave their link below too. So make sure to check out both companies, give them a try. But yeah, that was like, I was so excited. <laughs> I'm such a dork. I'm like, come out and I'm all giddy. And Paul's like, you were in there for like 20 minutes. <laughs> and I was like, they have a wall of loose leaf tea. <laughs> so um, yeah pretty exciting that was really cool I got two little bags of tea to try from them the other thing that we found was we found this little building that was a rock and stone store now the only reason we went in there was because the kids really love rocks Stevie Wren in particular she loves rocks she likes collecting them and both of the kids had some money to spend so we went in there and it was beautiful and they had all these rocks, all different prices. So it was completely affordable for the kids to grab some rocks that they liked. Stevie Wren found a, 
a bracelet that was made out of rocks, and she grabbed that because she likes jewelry. And Steve, uh, Kingston found some uh, stones that were shaped into animals. So and they had a the, and they had a the, uh, three big rocks. Three big rocks. Yeah, they had some big rocks there too. So, um, but Paul found something. This uh, handcrafted mortar and pestle, and it's a decent size. It's that's pretty. It's pretty deep. That's a decent sized one, and it's just beautiful. And so. He got this because he thinks that I'm going to use it quite often. I think it's one of those things that you don't think you need until you have it, and then you use it all the time. I felt the same way about my KitchenAid. I was like, I don't need that. I don't need something to mix for me. <laughs> and now it runs all day long. So pretty excited to have this, especially as we get into like more of the medicinal herbs and stuff like that. So this was a cool find. It was $40, which I don't know how good of a price that is. I don't know if it's a bad price, but it, this is heavy duty. It's handcrafted. It's beautiful. So, um, yeah, so we got that. We got the tea. We got a couple glass jugs. It was a really fun day. If you are in Maine, I highly suggest doing some antiquing. I want to thank you guys for stopping in and watching this video. Thank you for subscribing and sharing. Thank you for commenting and interacting with me. I'm going to end this video with some footage of the old photos that we, uh, the old photos and paintings that we found in this house. And we finally got them all up on the walls. So it's starting to look a little more like home now. So I'm going to end this video with that and happy homesteading.